Hello YouTubers! Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to a little library that uh, I developed you know over a weekend to uh, help you write a prettier, uh, simpler, uh, easier to maintain Blazor applications. Um, let's just step back a little bit and let me tell you what were the motives and you know where did I come up with this idea and why do we need to have you know um, you know additional syntactic sugar when it comes to you know uh, expressing a particular routine or operations when we're writing Blazor applications. Let's step back a little bit really really further and let's talk about you know programming in general. When you're writing any program in general there is these three types of um, uh, control, control structures that computer scientists defined since the beginning of time which is like 1970. So with that epoch time you know people were um, um, talking about the the sequence, the sequential uh, structure control uh, type and they were talking about the uh, selection uh, structure control type and then there was also the iteration structure control type. Every single scripting, programming, whatever you're using out there to express a particular set of routines that you need your computer to perform, whatever that is. It could be all the way down from assembly level all the way up to whatever whatever is the coolest thing that the cool kids are using these days from a programming language standpoint, closure or whatever. So um, Every scripting language, everything that you use to um, uh, develop a particular set of commands or visualize something on the screen needs to have these three uh, uh, structures, right? You need to have the sequence, you need to have the selection, and you need to have the iteration, right? If I were to express those real quick for you, and I'm going to give you some examples and hopefully you'll understand the motives and why we're doing what we're doing and all that kind of cool stuff. Okay. This is gonna look a lot like a like a like a PlayStation controller, so please don't take it as such. But here we are. So if I were to express this, let's share our screen with you here. All right, there we go. If I were to express those, let's let's represent the um, um, sequential uh, control structure type, you know, uh, in in programming as this box, right? So you go one, two, three, four. So if you go from the top to the bottom without any problems, right? So that's your structure. But also there is the selection type, which you use every day. It may not be, the term itself might not be super familiar, but I promise you, you're using it every day, which is basically every time you decide, you know, to take one flow or the other when you're implementing a particular feature. So every time you use an if statement, every time you use a, a you know, a switch case, you know, every time you use a routine or a programming technique to take a route, either to go right or left or, you know, determine between three different types or whatever the case may be, that's basically what computer scientists call selection. Selection structural control structure flow. So that's, that in here is sequential. Sequential, like this. And this guy here is selection. Right, so you select one path, so you're not really going from the top to the bottom like everybody else. Nope, you're going either right, you're going left, you're selecting other options, and so on and so forth. And this is this is in its simplest form. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me, the the number of options today are infinite. The last one in here is the iteration. See, it looks like a uh, PlayStation controller commands, right? So the, the the third one here is the iteration, which which is basically when you want a particular routine to execute for a particular set or number of times or a particular set of elements, right? So if, you know, it, it helps engineers a lot not having to repeat the code. You don't have to say, you know, print, 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 print 1, print 2, print 3, print 4, print 100. You could just have an array from 1 to 100 and just write print once and put it inside of an iteration um, uh, uh, structural control structure and boom, you have the iteration going on. So these three things, and you'll see this try nature in so many different things and in, in the standards that I do and everything around you really. Like if you are a body, mind, and soul and you have, you know, validation and, and processing and, you know, integration in, in software. And if you have structural and logical and external validations, you'll see this and you have services and brokers and controllers. You'll see this try nature in so many different things around you. 
The same thing happens here with the uh, with the with the control flow, right? So you could be like I'm going to give you examples right now. For instance, if you are um, expressing a sequential uh, structure, it's just as simple as going and saying, here's an example for this. When you go and say, you know, um, var x equal 10, and then you know, console or print. Oops, let's go here. Here, var x equal 10, and then print or console right line x. This is your sequential nature of things. You're going and saying this is one command to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and so on and so forth. There's no problem there. The other type that you may use, and I'm going to give you an example for that in here, is very famous. When you go in here, like I said, when you use your if statements, right? So if you say if, if you have, let's say, boolean, boolean condition equal true, right? And you go in here and say if true, if condition is true, then you execute one thing, do something, else do something else, right? So that is your selection. You're not really going straight forward and executing everything. You're basically going one route instead of the other and so on and so forth. The iteration, obviously, you're very familiar with it. You know, every time you do a while, do while, I don't know if people still use do while. It has its uses, you know, legitimate, but for the most part, people just do iterations for each and, uh, and for each async or something like that. You go and say for each, you know, and you have student, student and students like this <clears throat> and you go and say I want to execute this in a way like this that basically says I want for every student let's say you know a wait register student async so you're passing in the student object in there and boom you have the implementation right there you see this literally there is no program out there you know, it doesn't even have to be an enterprise program or anything like that. There is no program out there in our world today that doesn't have one of those three um, uh, uh, control structures. They call them st control structure types, right? The sequential selection and iterations, right? But the way how scripting languages and programming languages implement that feature varies. It varies a lot between one programming language to the other. You know, Java will do a for loop a little bit or for each loop a little bit different than C sharp from, from, uh, from you know, um, Go language to whatever the case may be. They, they have a little bit of, um, you know, an accent to them, a little bit of syntactical. They borrow syntax from each other, especially that most of them share the same parents from a programming language tree standpoint. But at the end of the day, you know, most of them try to express one of these three, uh, all of these three controls you know, control structures in one way or another. Even in the things that you don't even expect to, to see a, a particular implementation happen. Like for instance, <clears throat> in CSS, you know, you can see the sequential implementation, like you can say, okay, you know, I, you know, for, you know, button X, you know, has the color red, button Y has the color blue and so on. So far, it's a sequential, but CSS also tries to implement, especially for web development, you know, has the ability to do iterations. Like for instance, when you go and say every element that's called button, you know, have, have the background color of it to be red, for instance. That's an iteration. It basically goes and pulls out a list of all the buttons on your system, and then it applies that style to them one by one. So that's that's CSS. Even CSS does FL statements. When you say you know um, uh, you know the the hash um, uh, button one, so you're basically looking specifically for if the button uh, ID equals button one, then go ahead and actually execute that. So you'll see that everywhere. The only the only language per se, could it be scripting, markup, programming, whatever you want to call it, the only language that actually doesn't allow you to do that kind of control in a way, right, in, in, in a very straightforward way, is the markup language. The markup language doesn't actually give you that kind of flexibility where you can go and say, I want to present a condition, and whether that condition is true or not, I want to switch between uh, one aspect or another. I'm going to show you an example and then I'm going to show you what what the solution for that may be. Let's go ahead and create a new a new Blazor application in here. <coughs> so here's create new project. There we go. 
and then I'm gonna create a blazer blazer application and then I'm gonna select a uh, blazer app like this I want to make sure that it's C sharp app yep that's C sharp app and that's server side okay perfect and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead in here and say pretty blazer demo so I'm creating a dotnet 5 uh, pretty blazer um, a demo project which should help me you know illustrate the point that I'm trying to show you in here let's say you have a simple blazer application go out on the web watch all the tutorials out there you'll see this is a very common thing that people do underneath even in my own examples like when you see when the OSSS examples when we're switching between particular states there is still that little leakage of C sharp syntax that goes right into let me let me increase the font here on my uh, machine so people people on their cell phones can actually see this uh, properly so let me go to a hundred and fifty percent here we go I hope that's that's clear enough and then let's go back here and then let me fix that one as well because we're gonna go back to it and then let's go back into our example and here is okay here's okay so here's here's my application I'm just gonna go to the page here I'm gonna go ahead and to take away all of that stuff and I'm gonna just give you an example I'm gonna create some C sharp code behind the scenes so so I, I am a big fan of unobtrusive C sharp and the whole point of this video to actually write unobtrusive C sharp so I'm gonna go ahead and say index.razor.cs so that's gonna go right behind your razor file see if I collapse this it goes right behind it but you gotta fix it you gotta say this is a partial class because it's a part of it is out there in the dot razor file and the other part is in here and I'm gonna do component base even even if the if, if, if it's already inherited but it's not visible to the engineers this is about engineering experience I don't wanna go so, so just for example I don't wanna go here and say override you know and then it say uninitialized and I don't know where this is coming from right from a from an implementation standpoint from an experience standpoint it seems like there's some magic happening behind the scenes that I'm not aware of obviously the inheritance from component bases happening on the index.razor file but I really don't have it I don't see it so let's make it a little bit visible for the engineers this is one time you will see me writing code that absolutely doesn't change anything in the implementation doesn't break any tests it's merely based to provide the best developer or engineering experience out there so I'm just gonna go ahead in here and say component base like this so we know that we're inheriting from this and then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a little list of numbers right I wanna go ahead and say you know here's the list of my numbers like this and I'm gonna assign an initial state since I really don't care about any specific implementations I'm gonna assign an, an initial state I'm just gonna say innumerable like this and range and let's say from zero start zero to count ten and just say dot two list so this is a very simple back-end code that gives me a bunch of numbers from zero to ten okay if I want to go and print these numbers out today what are you gonna do you're gonna go out there I wanna print a paragraph for each and every one of these numbers right what are you gonna do a lot of people you see a lot of people go and do this int number in numbers like this and then they go look 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 how the look how the editor is freaking out because you're writing two different scripting script languages programming languages together and the editor is trying to figure out what the heck is going on with your implementation so I have to go and do control KD until it know it's actually C sharp code and actually print that number in there just like this so this is all I'm doing as you can see here I already am creating obtrusive extremely ex obtrusive c-sharp code by just going and saying this is c-sharp code here but I want to also have HTML in here let's run this application real quick let's go ahead in here <coughs> excuse me here we go now here's your index page and it'll basically say prints out the numbers from 0 to 9 this is problematic it's problematic for two reasons think about this in a larger scale application right let's say you're iterating through a bunch of you know students and you know if the student exists in the database then render student already exists otherwise show the registration page it gets 
so complicated so fast and the more c-sharp code you write in there it's it's really um it's really a, you know uh, uh, attractive to go and actually write just you know I, let me just finish it real quick man let me just write that c-sharp code and move on but from a readability standpoint without you knowing your brain is doing that switch between c-sharp and markup back and forth back and forth back and forth and it's tapping into two different resources and it's actually draining your energy without you knowing like you're actually looking at the code think about this code in a larger scale let's say you're looking at you know, 120 lines of code that are both HTML markup and C sharp. And some people are actually even more generous and the at CSS in there, you know, that's definitely, that's that definition of a salad spaghetti code. You're looking at it and, you know, everything is really hard to understand because you have to do that switch. Your brain is doing it in a very short time, like in a femtosecond, your brain is doing that switch, but it's actually draining your energy. Think about it. Think about your cognitive resources as a phone battery, right? It's a phone battery, and the more complex operations you're doing, unnecessarily, because it can be simplified, the more complex operations you're doing with your brain, the faster it is for you to get tired and not be able to accomplish a particular task. It'll make your... Um, your ability to focus it takes away from your ability to focus and eventually it'll just put you in this state where uh, I can't get anything done you know this is too complicated or am I stupid or what's the what's the deal right no you're not stupid it's that's the, the case the, the code that you're writing in is too complicated and it's draining your resources without you knowing so this is problematic. It looks simple, but it's very pro problematic because you're writing HTML and C sharp and it's just a mess going on there. It gets even more interesting if I want to go and say, actually, don't print it like this. I want to put an if statement in here and say, if the number, <clears throat> if the number is divisible by two, then print one thing. Look how the editor is freaking out again. It, it doesn't know what's going on. It's, you know, you have to do control KD and go back again. So, you know, if it's not, I want to print something else. So let's say in here, I want to say number is, <coughs> see, I'm, I'm back from C sharp to HTML again and so on. So number is a, a even, right? And in here, I want to say number is odd. Now we have a party going on in our code, right? Because now you have the C more C sharp code being added to your to your system, and more uh, now you have C sharp piece, and then you have HTML piece, and then HTML encapsulation, and it's just a party, a party going on in your code. It works, and your client wouldn't notice the difference, but your engineers will be suffering, you know, because it's very hard to wrap your head around what's actually going on so much so that you know the editor has to highlight the c sharp code like this see this highlight this is also it's helping you see the c sharp code from any other code but it's actually you know consuming more resources from you because you're like oh what's that highlight again it's all about engineering experience it's built literally for engineering experience so let's run this again and let's see what that looks like <clears throat> So it should print every number and it should go and say, you know, I don't know, there's a, a big religious war argument behind whether zero is even or odd. I, this is not the point of this video. OK, please don't get me into that. But let's just go ahead and say, you know, so see how it's printing one, two, three, and it's odd and, and even. But now your code is getting even more complicated. This is a very long winded way of saying it looks like markup could use a little help to um, uh, to kind of reflect the nature of the code that I've just implemented in a more markup way. For instance, I can go and throw all that stuff away and I just go ahead in here and go to manage NuGet packages. There, there, there was so, so much C-sharp code 
in the in the Razer app that you, you you don't even see HTML that much. It makes you wonder if this C sharp or is this. And some people will say, okay, let me do some hacky stuff behind the scenes. Let me just prepare the list before I render it, so it prints out off the bat whether something is. Um, is odd or even and all that. Yes, you have that luxury with a simple example like this, but you won't have this luxury with with more complex examples. Especially when you're iterating, you have to make another API call and and pull other things and stuff like that. It gets it gets really complicated. So here's Pretty Blazor. I call it Pretty Blazor because it it really makes your Blazor implementation pretty beautiful, right? It makes it a lot easier for you to go and say you know I want to express a particular implementation I don't want to go behind the scene and start building you know working with build trees and create components in the C sharp and try to render it on the front end it gets it gets too complicated too fast it makes the engineering experience a little bit tough instead let's just go ahead in here and call pretty blazer in fact actually I would say if you're gonna do it in your application go to the general imports area here and throw and throw uh, pretty blazer all the way up here because you're gonna use it everywhere and I hope you use it and it's useful for you look at this people are already doing something similar in here in your app.razor when they're saying okay there's a situation if the page is found do something if the page is not found do something else how come we don't have this on a global scale across my entire blazer application where I can do that stuff and it's still easier for me to read that's what blazer pretty blazer comes here to do with the addition of the iteration piece so now I can go here let's go back to what we started we said I wanted to do an iteration so look you have iterations and inside the iterations, I want to pass a list of numbers. So items equal numbers like this. Look how easy this is. I'm just writing markup, very simple markup. And I'm just passing items as numbers. And inside these numbers, I can determine for every iteration what I need to do about it. In my case here, I want to write HTML when I can say, you know, print out the number, which is the context. There will be an upgrade to this library where you can call the context whatever you want. I've seen some people do really cool things when they go in here and say context equal number like this. And now you can use number instead of context. You're basically assigning it to another variable within your component. But for now, you're printing out context. Context is basically the elements, every element that comes out of this guy. It's the equivalent of saying number, 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 the, the number that you're iterating on. Does this work? I just wrote, you know, markup, you know, I didn't write any C sharp code. I just expressed the rendering implementation that I wanted to do purely through markup. How does that look like? Let's go and run this again. <coughs> Here we go. Look at this. Oh, I, I forgot. Uh, why did I put that in there? So let me take that out and let me run this again. Look at this. It's iterating through each and every number in your list. And it's doing this amazing work of producing the exact same result that we had. The only difference is, is that in a more complex situation, it's much easier for you to read iterations, iteration, and then read your, um, your context, rather than going and actually writing C-sharp code where it doesn't belong right this is called unobtrusiveness unobtrusiveness meaning obtrusive meaning that you're 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 abrasively engaging in an area that where you shouldn't be right you're you're overstepping and going over boundaries where you shouldn't be and that's basically what's happening with a lot of you know blazer implementations today you see c sharp code being written directly into the markup where it shouldn't be right instead this is a simple implementation that allows me to iterate. But let's take this a little bit further. I want to go print is even is odd. How does that work out? I'm going to go inside my iteration for every iteration like this and go and type condition. Look at this condition like this. And inside that condition, I'm going to determine a couple of things. First of all, I want to know my evaluation. What's my evaluation? My evaluation is that my context should be divisible by two like this. So every number, if it's divisible by two, what happens? If my number is divisible by two, then render match. And if it's not divisible by two, then render not match. Look at this. 
So what that basically means, obviously, in a real life application, you do want to leave that hanging in there. You, you want to put that back in a method or something in your back end, right? Because we don't want to write the whole, that's the whole point of this video. And the whole point of this library is not to write C sharp code in your HTML, in your markup, whatever the case may be. So if it's a match, I can go ahead in here. Look, look how it's all smooth, very smooth. You can just look at it like this and I can go here and say, well, context is right if it's a match then it's even otherwise then context is odd look at this so now look at your code in general your 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 blazer code is much cleaner it's prettier because now you can see the order of things without you having to think too much about oh is this an if statement does this belong to the c sharp or markup but talk is cheap, right? Like Linus Torvald says, talk is cheap, show me the code. I, I say, show me the implementation, show me how that works out. So let me run this and see what is this theory. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work. Let's see what this looks like. Here we go. Here you go. Zero is even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, and so on and so forth. Right? A simple open source test-driven library that helps you write proper complex C sharp code. Someone might say, what if I want to have if this, else if this, else if this, and then at the end I want to do else, right? Someone want to do it this way. Absolutely. <clears throat> if you want to do it this way, you can simply just put condition match, condition match, condition match, like this, sequentially. So you can have as many condition match as you want, like this. See, it's all markup. And then at the very end, if you don't if you're done with all the options and go ahead and say if it's not a match. Done. This is a very basic library. This is the very the very first version of this library. I, I'm going to uh, push the um, the code in this particular repo for you. And I'm going to put it in the description area. But let's just jump real quick to the um, uh, open source, uh, the GitHub repo for this. I put in here all the details that I could possibly gather for you about the theory behind um, uh, Pretty Blazor, why I'm building it, why it's built this way, and what's the usage of it. You can see the tests for each and every um, component. It only supports iterations and conditions, which is the, 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 the only two pieces left to have a fully functional, uh, structurally controlled uh, type that can actually support this. You'll see some weird stuff in here, like you'll see render fragment, create render fragment. I'm basically creating fragments on the fly with C-sharp so I can write a, a, a C-sharp code. Not a big fan of doing that. This is why we build libraries like these. So, you know, the backend code of it might be a bit complex and the testing of it might be a bit complex. But from an implementation standpoint, it should be really, really simple. Like in the condition area, the condition area takes an evaluation and render fragment. Match, not match. Just as simple as that. You can pass literally whatever you want in there. No problem in there. These are your parameters and you can test them. You can actually, you know, it's 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 built for you to be able to test drive a development with them. And the, the iteration one is a little bit more interesting because the iteration one in the back, you're taking a render fragment with a type, so whatever that type may be. <clears throat> but then at the same time, you also have the items and what you can do in here, uh, sorry, from a from an implementation standpoint, look at the iteration. It takes a type parameter, and for every type, it iterates. So it tries to abstract away this ugly stuff, where you have to actually write C# -sharp code in Razor. It does it itself, but it's trying to abstract that away from your uh, commercial application, so you can write pretty, literally pretty Blazor applications. That's basically the purpose uh, of this library. Um, remember this, you know the. This library is not built to make your code faster. It doesn't have any impact whatsoever on your clients, the consumer of your web applications today, no impact. This library is built specifically for you as a developer, engineer, someone who is building software to make your code much more comfortable to look at, to make it easier for you to look at hundreds of thousands of lines of code without getting your energy drained so fast. But it's still your responsibility to write simple code, right? It's just a library to make your, co your code pretty. But if you put too much of uh, pretty products on, you know, what's going to happen? You know, it's, it's just going to run out of control, right? It becomes very hard to, to um, uh, maintain and digest and all that kind of stuff.
So uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put all the links, you know, for the open source for the uh, for the open source project for the NuGet package. It's available today on NuGet with .NET 5. Uh, let me know if you need it in any, in any lower uh, environments. I'd be more than happy to do it in .NET 3 or 3.1. Although that .NET 6 is coming out now for long-term support, so you probably wanna you know get up to speed with that new with these new libraries and all that and you know take advantage of the cool things that blazer is offering you like dynamic components with dotnet 6 and all that kind of stuff which we talked about in a previous video you know but other than that you know that's that's pretty much it it's for you to, to simplify your experience to make your your life easier let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns at all um, uh, you know the the uh, the whole point of building stuff like this. Mostly, I build these libraries to help me with existing projects that I have. The only difference is that I like to share this with the rest of the world. So you are also able to write pretty applications while I'm writing. So, 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 so the experience and these libraries that I build, they're actually coming from a real need that I have in real life enterprise level projects that I'm working on at the moment. And I say, while I'm at it, here's my tools, go ahead and try to use it. And hopefully it'll be useful to you and feel free to, you know, improve it, contribute to the project. You know, open source is one of the most beautiful things humanity ever invented. And I'm more than happy to be a part of this big, big community with everybody else. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.